Welcome to Radio Free Sunroot. This is Colibri's weekly column. This is what collapse looks like. July 22nd, 2020. It's time to normalize the word collapse to describe the ongoing conditions in the United States. Some would counter it's well past time, and I won't argue with that, but I'd say we can no longer credibly claim that it's too early to make this call. Decline has been happening for decades at this point, as manifested in trends such as increasing class inequality, decreasing wages as relative to inflation, higher infant mortality, lower life expectancy, a disintegrating social safety net, explosive growth of the prison industrial complex, a deteriorating educational system, etc. More and more people have been feeling the squeeze in their efforts to get by, even if establishment voices make claims to the contrary about a, quote, recovery. But collapse is more than decline. It's when the system has lost enough integrity that it's gone beyond the point of no return. With the multiple levels of disruption that have accompanied the COVID pandemic, we have passed that point. Unemployment is at levels not seen since the Great Depression, but we're not going to get out of this one the way they did then. We no longer have the resources, either in raw materials or in manufacturing ability, and neither of those things can be brought back. Eighty years ago, we were a rising power, and after World War II, we took center stage when the other leads were exhausted or slain. The landscape is entirely different now, though. Others stand poised to step in when we lose our grip, which is an inevitability at this point. Another way to put it is that we just lack the oomph to avoid collapse at this point in our history. What a terrible history it's been, too. Founded on the original sins of genocide and slavery, we were on a bad path from the beginning. Our declaration of world dominance was made by destroying two Japanese cities full of civilians. In Southeast Vietnam, we murdered three million people and left behind mines and shells that still maim and kill to this day. All over the planet, we have pillaged and literally raped. Despite delusions to the contrary, we were never a shining city on a hill. More like a hellish pit of malice. For much of the human race, including not a few people within our own borders, the collapse of the U.S. will be considered a blessing. That all empires end is not merely a truism, but an historical fact. It doesn't matter that many would shrug off the label of empire. That's what we are, and we're not exempt from the fate that all of them eventually face. With collapse will come much suffering, that's certain. People will lose their homes, their health, and their personal freedom, if not their lives. Given our national character as a settler colonial state, we can expect an uptick in violence, especially with so many firearms in circulation. Suicide, too, will become more common. However, the results of collapse will undoubtedly be a mixed bag. As the old falls apart, room will open up for the new. With less centralized control, locally-based initiatives will have the chance to grow. Experiments that have formerly been repressed will finally have a chance to be tried out. Bad habits will be broken, both individually and culturally. We will be inspired by courageous people and powerful actions. Love will conquer in some moments, as it always has. This is all just to talk about the domestic issues of the United States. Of course, the world is bigger than that, and no matter how things go down here in terms of social institutions, economic conditions, or cultural arrangements, we're facing a much bigger challenge that's been taking a back seat in the news during the pandemic and the uprisings, but which ultimately dwarfs these concerns. And that is the environment. The climate's course into increasingly chaotic territory continues unabated. Fires rage in Siberia. Arctic ice is at record low levels. Heat records are being smashed all over the world. The planet is becoming more inhospitable to human habitation with each passing year. Lurking in the background is the threat of abrupt climate change at a level that would wipe out agriculture and make vast areas of the globe unlivable. According to ice cores and other evidence, dramatic shifts can take place on alarmingly short timelines of just a few years. For example, see the Younger Dryas period of about 11,500 years ago, which coincides with the Neolithic Revolution. Trump and elections won't matter on a planet that's suddenly several degrees warmer or cooler, where death tolls from starvation are in the hundreds of millions. The cohesion of the nation-state model itself will unravel at that point, and political power and material wealth will be of no consequence. 
Just as many humans will be relieved when the U.S. and its military machine are no more, so will many non-human creatures be when human civilization and its methodology of domination are gone. In the meantime, here we are. The future is uncertain. In and of itself, that's neither good nor bad, but merely a condition. I'm not going to say that life will be, quote, what we make of it, because I don't believe that. At the individual level, we will be buffeted by forces beyond our control. Luck will play as big a part as preparation. And another way of looking at it, though, quote, what we make of it is exactly what we're getting collectively. One thing is undeniable. We can't say we weren't warned. Since the beginning of this misbegotten project called civilization, there have been dissidents in word and in deed. At every step of the way, when we have chosen to walk with ecocide, we could have taken a different path, but we did not. Now, the reckoning is here. If you enjoyed this reading today, please consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash colibri, K-O-L-L-I-B-R-I. To find out about the other podcasting I do, visit radiofreesunroot.com.